every true Christian, meditation on the cross is a wonderful experience which can lose its efficacy in no time. God is great. Our emblem is cross, not a wooden cross, not a silver or a gold cross, not a marble cross, an experience of cross. God is wonderful. <coughs> Please turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 verse 1. Philippians chapter 3 verse 1. Finally, after all, this word finally doesn't mean that the lost. After all, the sum of everything. My brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. For you, it is safe. This is not the opening verse for today's message. This morning I'm going to speak to you a topic from the book of Galatians, which I have spoken to you earlier in a few more occasions. To preach the same thing again, it is not grievous for me, it is not monotonous for me. But I am speaking the same thing to you, it is for you, it is for you, it is safe, it is secure, it brings safety to you in your Christian walk. One of the anchor persons of a Tamil news channel, a very eminent person, quite often he says, Marapadu mani the yelbu, ade meendum nenevu padithu ade emadu kadame. Marapadu mani the yelbu, ade meendum meendum nenevu padithu ade emadu kadame. I'm going to speak to you, as I told you, a topic which I have already dealt with you, maybe more than one time. But yesterday the Spirit of the Lord very clearly burdened in my heart that I should speak to you the same portion again. When I was preparing for the special meeting, the Spirit of the Lord led me to speak on that topic in that church. And very clearly I'm constrained in my spirit to speak the same portion again here. Maybe some of you knew, some of you may have forgotten, and the Lord has found it essential that it should be reminded of to the church again. We are in the uh, days where the church is more meditating on the cross, the sufferings of Jesus Christ. It is true Jesus died, for the world during the days of the uh, Passover season, on Passover day. It's a historical fact. We don't know when Jesus was born, but we all know very well when Jesus was crucified. On that year, on the day of the Passover. It's almost in the same season. So meditation on the cross is a great blessing to everybody, even whatever the season may be. If you've got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to the book of Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. And I shall read from verse 6. Mark chapter 15, verse 6. Now at the feast of the... Now at that feast, he released, Pilate released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. It was the custom. 
during this feast feast of passover and feast of feast of the unleavened bread both would come together the day next to the feast of passover is the feast of unleavened bread it was a custom that on that feast they would release one person you know during gandhi jayanti they release some prisoners during the birthday of anna they release some prisoners this time even during the birthday of former chief minister uh, honorable jayalalitha they want to release some prisoners so it was a custom to release prisoners uh, during the time of feast whomsoever they desired whom so you have they desired and there was one named barabbas which lay bound with them that is made in selection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection so many times whenever we think about barabbas when we when we think about the two malefactors criminals uh, to thieves generally we say call them thieves those who are crucified with either side of Jesus Christ just for you to know they are not petty thieves they are not uh, pocket pickers or burglars most probably in history they believe they are the terrorists the terrorists who are fighting against the Romans zealots, terrorists So it was a crime against the nation it's a crime against the Roman government that was they were given the highest capital punishment of hanging on the cross hanging on the cross is the most cruel punishment in the world till today a person will be nailed to a cross there are different types of trees he will be nailed to some wooden planks and he will be allowed to hang in that posture for days sometimes for a week they will be hanging like that to take exasperation they will die maybe after 2 weeks 3 weeks some people after 2 days 3 days and to bring shame, to bring scar in the minds of the people they will be allowed on the cross like that we say crucifix crucifix fixing on the cross cross speaks about just a wooden beam is a latin word from crux crucifix means fixing on the cross on the cross the tamil word cross is a better word is that other better pronunciation cross So fixing somebody on the cross so probably barabbas was a terrorist their main targets were the publicans publicans were considered to be the hirelings of the roman government so the uh, publicans are the tax collectors in Tamil Ayakkar even today for the income tax office you go to Nungambak and you see the board Ayakkar the office of Ayam Ayam means tax that's the Tamil word for tax so Ayakkar Republicans are the tax collectors today the tax collection is done by the government income tax or whatever the tax may be property tax salary tax it is collected by the government even now there is a plan that the government may hand over the tax collection to private agencies now already the toll collection is given to private agency some private agencies will pay amount for that amount to the government and they will take their license to collect the toll now the banks to recover the debts to recover the debts they give the responsibility to some private agencies so they'll collect the money from the private agency by hook or crook or by force or by fraudulence this private agency will squeeze people and they will collect the dues 
they will collect the dues they will recover the dues maybe dues from farmers dues from students or dues from ordinary people like that in those days the in the tax collection was given to private agencies they will pay a big amount uh, amount to the roman government and they'll take the license to collect the toll it's more a toll in those days and also there are the money exchanges people from different countries will come they bring dollars they bring uh, pounds or they bring some uh, some other currency and they have to exchange those currencies at the toll so these people will extract money as they want the first target of these militar militants are the terrorists where these tax collectors there was one disciple of jesus christ he was a terrorist formerly he was a terrorist his name was simon simon peter was one the other one simon the zealot when you read the word simon the zealot in today's language we can say simon the terrorist he is identified as zealot a man with a zeal and it was very interesting to note and another disciple of jesus christ was matthew the tax collector matthew the tax collector was always the target of earlier simon the zealot both of them have become the disciple of jesus christ i don't know how jesus christ was managing simon the zealot and matthew the tax collector opposing forces forces two opposing forces okay now barabbas must have been a terrorist like that and people thought that he was fighting for the freedom of them he was fighting for the freedom of them and because he was murdering probably some of these tax collectors and roman soldiers he has been condemned to this capital punishment of crucifixion and that was one named barabbas which lay uh, bound with them that he had uh, that had made insurrection trouble insurrection uh kolapam made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection in that insurrection the very galata in that insurrection he murdered somebody and the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them they and the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to be released now we give said the uh, the the what we can say the the accused of rajiv gandhi murder case a former prime minister that they are in the prison for more than 25 years now release them we desire there is no definite charge against peter rival and we desire that he should be released like that if that day people desire it was probably they are instigated by the high priest and also it was a desire they thought he fought for the freedom of them and jesus was not fighting for their freedom from the roman government jesus was not leading any insurrection jesus has not murdered any of the hirelings of roman government he has never murdered any publican uh, tax collector instead he was sitting and eating with the tax collectors they thought he was a friend of these tax collectors who are considered to be anti nationals anti jews he was a friend of the people thought so they desired the release of barabbas but pilate answered them saying believe that i release unto you the king of the jews he called him the king he said he was the king of the jews shall i release him unto you for he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy or the envy only this fellow was uh handed over to the roman governor was leaven but the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release barabbas unto them he asked for barabbas asked for barabbas not this fellow asked for barabbas 
they instigated the people. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will you then that I shall do unto him, whom you, can, you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! Crucify him! Verse 14. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more, more exceedingly, Crucify him! Crucify him! My dear brother, my dear sister, they showed no mercy. But to understand the background, once he asked, what shall I do with Jesus? They said, crucify him, crucify him. And first he asked, shall I deliver him? They said, crucify him. Then the second time he asked, what shall I do with him? Just something in between happened. That we read in Romans chapter, I'm sorry, John chapter 19. So what happened in between these two? John chapter 19. Then from verse 1, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. The first time when they said, Crucify him, crucify him. Don't deliver him. They took Jesus in. And he scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that he may know that I find no fault in him. That's what happened in between these two shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. They took Jesus in. They scourged him. They tore his back. It was like a ploughed field. They put a crown of thorns on his head, hammering with the, with the rod. They hitting on the, his cheek with a rod, with a bare hand, with the rod. They plucked his beard. They all are Roman soldiers. To understand the background, they come here to give Vandabas during the feast. Say so election time, we get a battalion. In ordinary Arcanary election, we get a battalion from other states, maybe from Rajasthan, maybe from Madhya Pradesh. The battalions will come. To they will have a flag march to maintain peace. They don't know anything about uh, Chennai. They may not know who is the mayor, they may not know who is the chairman. They just come to give the Bandobast. Like that, these are the Roman soldiers. They were deployed for this festival season. They don't know anything about, they have never seen Jesus, they have never heard about any Jesus. Now the only thing they know, this fellow claimed that he was a, he was the king of the Jews and he was a, a terrorist. He is uh, stabbing the people against the Roman government, uh, against our Caesar, an anti-national element. So they were thrashing Jesus. They were trash. They, know, they didn't know what they were doing. That's why Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they were doing. They have never seen Jesus. They have never heard about any Jesus. They have never seen Jesus' miracle. They have come there for the Bandhava's duty. The only thing they know, this fellow claimed that he was the king of the Jews. They scourged him. They were spitting on his face, about 50, 60 soldiers around. His face was with blood and spit. When we look at his face, there's no beauty, there's no comeliness in it. It was so mad, his visage so mad. Now, Pilate said, okay, I have done all this inquiry, I find no fault with this fellow. That is the second time he asked, What shall I do with Jesus? I have found no fault with him. I have done this inquiry in a, the cruelest manner. I have done this inquiry. And look, I find no fault in him. What shall I do with this Jesus? All the more they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! He brought the Jesus before them. 
with a crown of thorns, with beard flecked, face with blood and spit, with a purple robe, fully torn. Jesus was standing there. He said, Behold the man. Behold the man. I tortured him so badly. That's it, there's a famous a Latin phrase, Exi Homa. Exi Homa. Behold the man. Behold the man. Exi Homa. He won't. I find no fault with him. They shouted, Crucify him. Crucify him. He wanted over Jesus Christ to be crucified. It's not easy to crucify a man that accused must carry his own cross. The one cross, the, 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 a cross will, will be about 130 kilograms to 150 kilograms. It's not that easy for somebody to carry 150 kilograms. So mostly people say that only the cross beam, only the cross beam they will carry. The cross beam alone will, will be around 40 kilograms, will be around 40 kilograms. And it will be about 8 to 10 feet, the cross beam alone, 8 to 10 feet. About 40 to 50 kilos. So we don't know historically whether Jesus was carrying the whole cross with 150 grams, it would be very 150 kilos. I was carrying only the cross beam, as some people believe, about 40 to 50 kilos. And he'll be taken to the, uh, the prisoner will be taken to the uh, place of execution and they'll prepare the cross, the vertical beam and the cross beam, they'll make a cross fastened with nails and all, then they will make their prisoner lie on the cross and they will take a nail of some 8 inches or to 10 inches, a long nail, they will keep it on the wrist between the two bones and they will drive a nail about 8 inches long, a nail about 8 inches long, a big peg, a peg, they will drive that big peg through uh, between these two bones in the wrist. Very excruciating. An ordinary executioner, a man with a, heart, a tender heart, can't do that work. Can't do that work. Generally, even today, the executioners, those who hang prisoners, they'll be fully drunk. They are going to kill somebody. They are going to hang somebody because of the order of the government. They are going to hang that person and that hangman will be fully drunk in those days. Otherwise it's very difficult to drive that nail when that person was crying, breathing in pain. They drive this nail in one hand, they drive the nail in the other hand. Generally they drive the nail, I read in one book, in the legs first. They fix, that's a crucifix. fix. That nail will be about 10 to 12 inches long. 10 to 12 inches long. Generally they keep both the legs together. Through the bones, in a very meticulous way. Through the bones they will drive that nail. That is crucifix. Crucifix. They fix that person on the cross. There will be a pit prepared, for prepared, already prepared and kept through some machine, they lift the cross, dip, 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 something like a crane, they lift the cross and the bottom of the cross will be dropped into that pit, tip. the nails will tear the body of the prisoner the hands and the feet. Excruciate. He's not dead. He's not dead. 
Today there are crucifixion, even today. To the best of my knowledge, till 2015 there were crucifixions. But mostly, they kill the person and crucify the body. In 2014 there was a crucifixion in Saudi Arabia. They beheaded the person, then the body was crucified to scare the public, to scare the other criminals. But in those days, crucifying a lie, mercilessly. It is to scare people. But on the nail they'll be hanging for two days, three days, for two weeks, three weeks. Till they could have a natural death. By the time vultures will come, kites will come, they'll sit on their body, they'll pluck their eyes, they'll pluck their flesh. Cruel, gruesome. My dear brother, my dear sister. To look at that cross, Jesus hanging on the cross. So when Paul was writing to Galatians, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before those eyes, Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Is that foolish Galatians? Who has bewitched you? Which witch has deceived you? If I put it in Tamil, Yara Mulav Suni Achar, Yara Mulavanapanda, who has bewitched you? Or who has deceived you? Who has made this? Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? No, you are not obeying the truth. Who has bewitched you? Christ was evidently uh, before his, before he arrived, Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Before he arrived, Christ was crucified, hanging on the cross. You have seen that. But that is not a fact. Historical fact. Galatians, which were nearly after 35 or 40 years after Jesus' crucifixion, Paul was writing to the people in Galatia. Paul has never seen Jesus hanging on the cross. Paul has never seen Jesus hanging on the cross. The people in Galatia, it was in Asia Minor, they had never seen Jesus hanging on the cross in, uh, in Palestine, in Jerusalem, on Mount Golgotha. They had never seen. But the church had the revelation. Jesus hanging on the cross. Jesus hanging on the cross. The church had the revelation. Now they have forgotten that revelation. If the church has to forget the revelation of Jesus hanging on the cross, some force has bewitched them not to obey the truth. Whenever the church would forget the vision of Jesus on the cross, the evil spirit will bewitch them not to obey the truth. My dear brother, my dear sister, in the book of Galatia, the Paul was very harsh and saying, Who has bewitched you that you forgot the vision of the cross? When we read the book of Galatians, in that book alone, Three times, Paul was writing about Jesus hanging on the cross plus. Three times, Jesus, Jesus hanging on the cross plus. Very quickly, I am going to show you those three things. What we should crucify with Jesus on the cross. What we should crucify 
with Jesus on the cross. Number one, Galatians 2.20. After saying this only, he comes to the foolish Galatians, etc. In Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Number one, I am crucified with Christ. So whenever you behold Christ on the cross, you should see that I am crucified with Christ. What Paul literally said, that ego is crucified with Christ. Ego is crucified with Christ. Philosophically, the meaning of that word ego is, I know who I am. I know who I am. That's ego. I know who I am. That's ego. If I think more than who I am, it is hyper-ego. I know that I am a pastor, that is ego. I know that I am husband of so and so, that is ego. I know that I have got so many degrees, that is ego. I know that I got my bachelor's degree in mathematics, that is ego. I know that I am the President of America, that's hyper-ego. It's an abnormal character. I think that I am more than what I am. I know that I am pastor of this church, that's ego. I know who I am. And suddenly I think that I am President of America. That's a mental disorder, that's a hyper-ego. People think more than what they are. People think more than what they are. There's a hyper-ego. They think more than what they are. There's an inferiority complex. People think lower than what they are. They think lower than what they are. When I think what I am is ego. But many of them we have got problems because we know who we are. Many of them we got problems because we know who we are. Suppose if I if a volunteer or a choir girl or a musician, somebody they come late. I'd be angry. Why should I be angry? Because I know that I am the pastor. I know that I am the leader of this house. I know that I am responsible. So I am called somewhere else to speak as a guest speaker. There, if a singer comes late, I am not, I'm not getting angry. There also a singer comes late, a choir guy comes late, I will not be angry. That the mic is not in proper, I am not be angry. Because I am not the pastor of the church, I am not the leader of that group. I am not responsible for somebody coming in time or not coming in time. If our own son doesn't obey us, we get angry. And a father, a partial renter. When somebody else does the same thing, we will not be angry. Because I am not the father of them. A girl is highly educated, her husband is not educated. She knows that I am educated. I got so many degrees. Or I belong to this caste. I got my degree from this university. So and so was my guru. See, we know all, we all are friends. I belong to this caste. My parents were rich. My parent was the, such a Great businessman is a crore The knowledge. 
But many a time, these plus points, they are against our salvation. So Paul says, these are my minus points. These are lost, negative points. I was circumcised. I was from the tribe of Benjamin. I am a Hebrew. I am a Pharisee. I am not accused. I, I, I have not broken the law. When I think about all these things, why should I need Jesus Christ? These are the negative things. I studied under the feet of Gamaliel. All these things, they stand against my salvation. He says, I count all these things lost to gain Christ. To gain Christ. So Paul says that I am crucified. It doesn't mean that I can forget that. That doesn't mean that I can forget that. I know my background. I know that I am from Thirumal Devi. It's not that I come from Bethlehem or I, it's not that I come from Rome. I come from Thirunal Valley. I didn't come here, I didn't come to India through uh, sneaking into India to do some business. I'm a lamb. son of this soil, born in this place. I'm the descendant, you know, my great great grandparents, my great grandparents. I don't get scared. I'm not from Rome. I'm not from Bethlehem. I'm from I'm a son of this soil. Great grandparents are Patra Kalum. A Kollu Pati Pair. A Kollu Patra Pair. Changuru Nanganara. I know. I studied in St. John's College. In those days that was first in the university. What are the subjects I had degree? I was a member baptized in cathedral. One of the biggest churches. One has got the largest choir. I took my boys there. There I was confirmed. I know. I know my background. You know that I have forgotten that. But Paul says that I should be crucified. I can't brag about it. I cannot wave my hands and legs because of I was so and so. Paul has not forgotten that he was a Roman uh, citizen. He has got a Roman citizenship. Paul has never forgotten that he has studied under the feet of Gamaliel. Paul has never forgotten that. Paul has never forgotten that. You can't forget it. Then you'll become a mental person. But you must have that knowledge crucified. That knowledge crucified to gain Christ in our life. So when we say crucify, crucify, it's not Jesus was crucified, that ego is crucified. I know who I am is crucified on the cross. I know who I am is crucified on the cross. To save time, let me go a little fast. Number two, you turn with me to uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Galatians 5.24 And they that are Christ and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. They that are Christ. Yesterday when I was preaching in that church I was bringing out the difference between they that belong to Christ and they are Christians. Just being a Christian is just a religion. Somebody is a Hindu, somebody is a Muslim, somebody is a Christian. It doesn't mean that you should belong to Christ. 
It doesn't mean that you should belong to Christ. Earlier somebody was a Hindu, now he is a Christian, that's all. Just a change of religion. Earlier he was celebrating Deepavali, now he is celebrating Christmas. Earlier he had a veil or a trishul, now he has got a cross. Earlier he had the picture of Lakshmi or Murugan, now they got the picture of Mary or Jesus Christ. It's a change of religion. It's only change of religion. But here Paul is not talking about change of religion. Paul was talking about if you belong to Christ. If you are Christ, you will have your flesh with the affections and lust thereof crucified. So it's not only we should crucify the ego, the knowledge that who I am, all the positive things that I can brag about, Make the unity, make the fix to the cross. Number two, the affections of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, it's natural. The natural affections, the natural lust of the flesh, because we are born again, you have become a new creation. You are not like an, any other person. You are made new. You are a new creation. If you are in Christ, all things passed away. You are a new creation. You are Christ. You are not born of a man, born of a blood, born of the will of a man. You are born of God. The Holy Spirit is in your body. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in your body. So others may have, any other human being will have the lust of the flesh and even the affections of the flesh. Maybe a lesser evil. That's a natural affection in the flesh. It's for any other human being, any other boy, any other girl, any other man, any other woman. It may be natural in the human body. But if you are Christ, the question is whether you are Christ or not. If you are Christ, have the flesh with its affections and lust crucified. So what are the lusts of flesh? Are the works of flesh? And in the same Galatians chapter 3, from verse 19 we read, from chapter 3, verse 19. Now the works are at chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. It's apparent. There's nothing hidden. We don't need to do a lot of research to find out what are the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest. It's apparent. It is made known. It's very easy to know. What are the works of the flesh? Adultery. Adultery is very common. So in the Bible language, what is adultery? A married man or a married woman loves another person in extramarital relationship, out of the marriage relationship. He is interested in some other woman or she is interested in some other woman. Biblically, it is adultery. In Tamil, nobody they use the phrase kallakada. Kallakada. It is outside marriage. We read so many things in the newspaper. Maybe when somebody, uh, he sleeps with that woman or he elopes that woman or that man, it is made known. But Jesus said, even if you had a desire in your heart, if a man desired, a type of a desire in his heart on a woman who is not his wife, it is adultery. If a woman will have a desire in her heart as a uh, marital desire, about another man, another woman's uh, husband, that is adultery. That's adultery. It's a kallakadal. It's not only when they elope, not only when they share the bed, even the desire is the kallakadal. For that what the world biblical term is, vibacharam. 
is an extra marital relationship and what the bible says vesitanam the same type of a kadari among the unmarried people they are not married today they say kadal is holy kadal and the punida 100% or 200% i agree with you kadal romba punida man காதலிக்க தெரியலன்னு சொன்னா வாழ்க்கையில் எதை இழந்து போட்டு காதல் கண்டிப்பா தேவை நல்லா அப்ப நினைக்காதீங்க கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பது வருஷமா காதலிக்க காதல் ரொம்ப என்னன்னு எனக்கு தெரியும் நாற்பது வருஷமா காதலிக்க ஒரே பொண்ணை காதலிக்க நாற்பது வருஷமா இந்த காதல் வளர்ந்துகிட்டே இருக்கு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் அகேன்ஸ்ட் காதல் பார் காதல் ஃபார்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் மை ஒய்ஃப் அண்ட் ஐ லவ் ஒன்னர் நிறைய பேருக்கு மனைவியை காதலிக்க மனைவியா காதலிப்பீங்க விபச்சாரக்காரங்க எங்களுக்கு மனைவியை காதலிக்க தெரியாது வேற யாரையாவது காதலிக்க தெரியும் அதான் விபச்சாரம் காதல் புனிதமானது எப்ப புனிதமானது மனைவியை காதலிக்கும் போது அது புனிதமானது மனைவி ஆகாத ஒரு பெண்ணை மனைவி ஆக்க போறேன்னு என்று காதலிப்பது வேசித்தன மனைவி ஆக்கிட்டு காதலி காதலிச்சுட்டு மனைவி ஆக்க தட் இஸ் வாட் கால் வேசித்தனம் in the bible term in the world it is very common now loving somebody after marriage loving somebody before marriage it is common it is the nature of the flesh the natural attraction for a man natural attraction for a woman if a girl could smile at a boy he will just dry dripping silla saliva he will go back here that's a nature nature but you be a christ i don't say that's not nature that's nature but you be a christ you will belong to christ crucify that nature to the cross that nature is from the devil but that's a nature but that attracts with nature in i have to read psychology i have to read adolescent psychology very thoroughly the book of elizabeth harlock is just like a such a fat book word by word i have studied in the psychology of a man a boy he loves to look at girls in the psychology of girls they love others to look at them boy that that's that, that's how they are me the boy will love to look at a girl and a girl will love others should look at her it's a, it's like a human psychology but he be a christ have that crucified have that crucified there was a problem in the house the husband and wife the father hated all women all women are like this so they had one boy so the father took that boy he went into the forest he didn't want his son to see one woman he didn't want to see one woman because it's he hated women so he was bringing up that his son in that forest and they they had never seen a woman in their life he has seen birds he has seen animals he was bringing up the son in such a way that in life he should not see a girl when did the father was taking him when this boy was grown up some 12 14 years old he took him one day to the sunday to the market so he wanted the boy to know the world and wanted to buy some things for this boy so when the boy was roaming in the market when only he could see a woman or a girl he just turned in that direction the boy father was very much worried this is what i thought never to happen but this boy is turning this side 
that side. So this boy became very curious to see this girls. He asked the father, Father, what are these species? He has never seen girls. What are these species? The father said, they are a type of a duck. They are a type of a duck. Okay, the round and all over. The father asked the son, They want me to buy anything for it? Yes, daddy. What's that you want to buy? I want that duck, daddy. I want that duck, daddy. It is natural. Flesh is not unnatural. But if you are Christ, if you belong to Christ, crucify that nature. The nature of the fallen man. You cannot say that I am a Christian and have that nature. Others may have that nature. I was saved in 21 years old. When I was 21 years old, I was saved. I know what is to have that nature crucified. My dear brother, my dear sister, when you look at the cross, have that nature crucified. The flesh crucified. And we'll just continue there. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, dirty, dirty thoughts, desire in dirty things. Many years ago, uh, a girl was coming to me for counseling. Her, she was in a third BSC or something. I know that her sister, she was in the first year or something. One day this girl was arguing, oh, Uncle, what is wrong in seeing cinema? It's entertainment. It is entertainment. So I was just explaining to her what an entertainment is and I said, No, 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 Uncle, she has said, Just imagine. She was sitting with a boy in the beach. And after some time when the dusk was coming, both of them were moving behind the boat and they had become very into Uncle, what uncle? I said, enjoy. Enjoy. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. What nonsense it is. Something dirty. How can we say that it's entertainment? A bedroom scene. A man and a woman, they are sharing the bed. Husband and wife. In a movie. Somebody who can see that, for somebody that is an entertainment, will he not see his son and daughter-in-law in the bed? Reality show. They want to see reality show. Peek through the keyhole when your father and mother are together. That's entertainment. There is a reality show. Your son and daughter-in-law, they are together, peek through the keyhole. Or put a CCTV camera inside and see it on a big screen. Nonsense. How can somebody think that that dirty thing is an entertainment? That shows how dirty, how filthy they are. Before your salvation, movie was an entertainment for me. Now when the Lord has come into my heart, when I can have Jesus inside, how can that filthy thing be an entertainment for me? I cannot imagine. See, just imagine a violence. Somebody was tied to a pole with hot iron. Somebody was going to pluck their eyes. Very natural. It's only a movie. That man was breathing in pain. With hot irons, his eyes were plucked. As some ten rowdies, they hit black and blue one person. Hit in all the places. How can that be any entertainment? Rubbish. Third rate rubbish. If somebody, that violence is an entertainment, a man and woman sharing the bed, Seeing that on entertainment, sex is an entertainment, I, it's for a natural man, it shows how dirty that man is, how filthy that man is. If somebody who belongs to Christ 
if they say it is an entertainment nothing but it shows how filthy that person is how filthy because he loves that filthy things a man and woman sharing bed a husband and wife sharing bed is not filthy a desire to see that is filthy a desire to see that is filthy a desire to see that while and see this filthy how cruel the person can be so here it calls uncleanness a lasciviousness perversion in sex sex is a god blessed one perversion in sex idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions hearsays envies murders drunkenness rebellions you can stop with that and such like of the witch i told you before and i also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god they do such things they will not inherit the kingdom of god that variance why like viraga emulation why like na pesa mat chetta na avinjara mulike mat this really in one church uh, i think the preacher was there he was preaching on this those who got all these things will not go into the kingdom of god there was a senior sister in that church she used to take sunday school she used to collect the offerings and all she was a member of that church for 20 years but she was not talking to her daughter in love for some time she had that type of why uh, like you i will not talk to my daughter in law the preacher said if you got all this vairagya mental you will not go to the kingdom of god you will not see the kingdom of god so after the service was over the senior viswasi went to the preacher and said sir i am a sunday school teacher in the church you know very good i used to help pastor in the collection of offerings and i oh that's fine i used to conduct house prayer oh it's welcome good I go for tax distribution village ministry and I'll be pastor he said oh fine and this is my problem with my daughter in law na avangaloda konja naala pesiradilla pesave maate na vairagya ma irukiren in the same tone that pastor says satyama ninga mochathukku po maatinga satyama ninga mochathukku po maatinga satyama na Yes, so that's why I am here. Truly. Truly. You are not going to go to the world. You are a Christian. You may have all traits. But if you have gone to the works of the flesh, the full list, if you have gone to the works of the flesh, you will not go to heaven. You will not see the kingdom of God. Whether you are a Christian or not, not a christian but if you belong to christ have these things crucified on the cross it's not the first time i'm preaching on this for your blessing but they are natural sin all the other boys in your college all the other girls in your college in your works for the women there the men there they all may have this nature but this nature must become a christian nature we were in the past we were in the past before this salvation we must have all these things in our life we must have, uh, we might have all these things in our life now we are children of god we have got the nature of christ in us so the christianity is a real life is not a religion is not a religion it is living it's a real life enjoy this life so when we think about crucifixion when we think about jesus crucified our ego must be crucified and the affection and the lust of the flesh these are the affection and the lust of the flesh adultery fornication 
y te la sacas de flesh. Y el deseo de ver el evil thing, el deseo de ver el reality show, el deseo de ver el bepsin, el deseo de ver la violencia, es una natural thing. Tener eso crucificado, ese virado, ese virado, ese crucificado. So I get angry, very sharp angry. Those are with me, they know. But I never allowed one night in my life to sleep with that anger. There are some people, husband and wife, they don't speak for two days, three days, one month, one week they will not speak. Somebody who has to come there, bring peace in that family. For the glory of the Lord, I tell you. We've got a 40 years plus married life. But not one night the anger has been carried over to the next morning. Not one night the anger has been carried over to the next morning. Not because I am good, but because it is the word of God. We are crucified with Christ. Our anger must be crucified with Christ. We must know how to handle our anger. We must be angry. Our God is the God of anger. To correct others, we have to get angry. But we know that should be a spiritual angry. Before the sun set, that anger must go away. For the glory of the Lord, I tell you. If you belong to Christ, you must have the nature of the first crucified. Just to say one more thing again from Galatians. It's only from Galatians I'm speaking to you. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. Galatians 6 verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Number three, the world is crucified. I am in this world. I am in this world. But if I belong to Christ, I must have the world crucified on the cross. My ego must be crucified. My flesh with its affection and the lust the nature of a fallen man, the nature of a fallen man, that must have crucified. That must have been crucified. And number three, the world, the system of the world must be crucified. There are seven things about the world. I don't have time to take all the seven things. The spirit of the world, the wisdom of the world, the rudiments of the world, the passions of the world. We are in the world, but we don't belong to the world. Others may enjoy the world. They must have the fashions of the world. They will go with the spirit of the world. They will go with the trend of the world. They are in the world, and the world is in them. They are in the world, the world is in them. We are in the world, but the world is not in us. For us, the world is crucified. The fashion of the world may change. I know how to dress. And the Christian boys know how to dress. Christian girls know how to dress. They don't go by the fashions of the world. Not the spirit of the world. Not the spirit of the world. My dear brother, my dear sister, we go by the spirit of God. We go by the spirit of the word, not the world. The word of God. By the spirit of the word of God, our lifestyle, our behavior, our interpersonal relationship, relationship between father and mother, relationship between parents and children, relationship with neighbors, relationship with the world, it is based on the word of God. The way that we love the world, God loved the world. So we also love the world. The way we love the world is different from how people of the world love the world. For us, the world is crucified. 
The fashions of the world are crucified. The spirit of the world crucified. The wisdom of the world crucified. The redeemings of the world crucified. So in the book of Galatians, when Paul was writing, Christ was revealed to you explicitly, evidently as crucified. Who has bewitched you that you could forget that? So when you see that Christ crucified, in that cause you should see three things. You must be able to see that your ego is crucified. Your ego is crucified. You must see flesh with all its affection and lust crucified. You will be able to see the world, the system of the world, the spirit of the world, the fashions of the world, crucified. Crucified. That will be natural for others. They will go with the fashions of the world. They will have the spirit of the world. They belong to the world. They are in the world. world is in them. We are in the world. world is not in us. You are not of the world, Jesus said. I believe I am not of the world. I am not of the world. I believe it. I am in the world. But I am not of the world. I am of God. I am born of God. I am born again. I belong to Christ. I honor the constitution of this country. I belong to this country. This is my country. I honor the law of this nation. The rules and regulations of this nation. I honor the rulers of this nation. The Lord has kept me in this nation. But I know one thing. I belong to God. My God tells me to honor, to favor my nation. To have respect for my nation. To have respect for my constitution. To obey the rule as the Bible says. But I know one thing. I belong to God. I am Christ. We are on a heavenly journey. We are put together Paul says in Romans chapter 6 verse 6 A old man is crucified with Christ That's the old man Saying I, I, I That is the old man To have the natural uh, lust That's the old man Going after the worldliness, that is the old man. Now I am a new man. I am born again. Others may, but I cannot. I cannot. Others may. I am born again. With all love and affection I tell you. To preach the same thing which I have preached earlier is not, it's not grievous for me, but it is for you safe. It is safe for you. To remind you again, if you are a Christian, you are a new man. You can't be like any other man who is not born again. You can't be like any other boy. You can't be like any other woman. You can't be like any other man. You can't be like any other girl. You can't be like anybody else. You are born again. You are born again. You are a new man. You must have that old man. You must have that world system. Crucified. In the world system, if they say love is holy, love before marriage, love between a boy and a boy, it is holy. Our way of thinking is slightly different. Love is very holy after marriage. It's not that we should not enjoy life. We tell you enjoy life in the full of your love for two years, love for three years. And after marriage, that love dies. And after marriage, if you start loving, that love will go for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, till death puts us in there. 
and that love will continue even after death. It's a true love. And Paul says, even death cannot separate us. It's a true love. And the true love is that if the husband dies, immediately the love doesn't die and they start loving another person. This is acceptable in the world. Even the Bible, they may accept that. The marriage, the relationship is only till the death. But a love that has grown for 20 years, a love that has grown for 30 years, a love that has grown for 50 years, even if it is permissible, the marriage may make one free, this love will continue. That's a noble love. My dear brother, my dear sister, it's only the difference what the world thinks and what a Christian thinks. You don't say don't enjoy the world. Enjoy the world in the right way. How the worldliness crucified. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Spirit of the Lord has spoken. We love you very much. Meditate these things again and again keeps you safe. I just shown you one look in the book of Galatians where Christ was manifest in them, evidently revealed in their midst, crucified. Shall we just close our eyes?